got a SharePoint library, but hate using it because it takes forever to find the information you want. If so, I created a great solution for procedures library using a custom Copilot agent. But these principles can be used for any use case. I'll show you how to create it, how to customize it, and it lives entirely within SharePoint. Let's get into it. So the problem is you've got so much information in your SharePoint libraries, but it takes forever to find this stuff. In this case, you just need to find information on one particular document and you don't want to have to dig through all this mess. Go through your filters, go through your folders, whatever it is. You want a quick answer and you want it now. The solution is we're going to have a Copilot agent that does all the work for you and just gives you back the answer. Sound great? Let's switch over to SharePoint. I'll show you my library. So here is a basic uh, a sample IT procedures library. This is where you've got all the different departments kind of documenting. Here's, a, here's how we do all of our different things, whether it's replacing a server in a server rack or uh, managing the temper control, temperature control in the server rack, updating the systems notification and banner, uh, banner in SharePoint. Whatever that process is, it's in here. To get started building this new agent, we're going to be heading over to the the uh, agents button over here, whatever they're calling it this week. I think it's gotten a few different names, but we'll call it the Copilot button for now. Now, what'll pop up is whatever the default agent is for that particular site, and we can click a drop down list, and we'll, you'll see at the bottom, create a new agent. So this will pop up the, the creation screen. For our agent, we can configure everything across the top here. So let's start with a, with giving it a good name. It starts with procedures agent, which is actually because if you look over here, the library name is procedures. So it kind of assumes it's an agent for that particular library. So it we we originally got procedures agent. How about we call this IT procedures agent because. There could be other departments that will create their own agent, and we don't want, you know, a hundred different agents out there called procedures agent because you know, some people might see multiple, and then they, well, they won't know which one to talk to because these things are going to be based off of the the knowledge in the library. It's going to be grounded on the library. So we'll call this IT procedures agent. And then we want to give it a good description, like what, what the purpose of this is. This will have a number of impacts in the future. But right now, it is just really going to help us to uh, know from an administrative point of view what this agent was created for. This agent helps users quickly find the steps needed to perform a and IT process. Uh, we can click on create here. We'll still uh, be checking out the sources and behavior, but uh, I just wanted to show you how we can get back to that screen after this thing's been created. We can click on IT procedures agent and then click edit agent. And then we're back here again. Now, this agent's gonna be really, really powerful, and it's gonna be an expert in all of our procedures. That's why this thing's gonna be so useful, regardless of whether you're using it for your own use case or this particular use case. But it is the expert on your data. But how are you protecting that data? That takes us to this video sponsor. Think your cloud data is safe just because it's in Microsoft 365 or Google Workspace? Think again. Accidental deletions, ransomware, and compliance gaps can still put your business at risk. AFI is a next-gen backup and recovery platform built for modern cloud environments, including Microsoft 365, Google Workspace, Azure, AWS, and Kubernetes. It offers full fidelity restores, encrypted full-text search, version history, and even self-service recovery. So users can get back data without waiting on IT. And when ransomware hits, AFI detects it early and automatically backs up your data before damage is done. Over 10,000 organizations trust AFI to protect their cloud data. If you care about uptime, compliance, and peace of mind, it's time to back up smarter with AFI. Now, on the Sources tab, you'll see which, lo which locations within SharePoint this agent will pull information from. It's not going to pull from everything in M365 because that's really the job of 
M365 Copilot. This just needs to be the expert on a particular area. In this case, I've got everything in one library. If I had multiple libraries, I could add, uh, just add in those, those libraries here. I could paste in the URL and you could have multiple libraries. It will work just fine. Although it really does work much, much better without folders. So you do want a good information architecture to get the best results from Copilot. The rest of this is going to be on the behavior tab. This is where it will really start to give this agent some character to kind of set up the whole experience that an end user will see. You'll see what the agent will look like when you chat with it on the right hand side. You'll see the name of the agent. You'll, it's greeting me by name and then it's giving me a starter or a welcome prompt or a welcome message. You'll find that actually defined right here. So if we wanted to change this to what process can I help you with? And then you'll see it updated right over here. We could say, how about server uh, replacement? We can define one of those here. Maybe we can get rid of these other two and we'll just leave one of these. Um, then we're down, uh, then we go down to the agent instructions. Now, this is probably, other than the knowledge you ground the agent on, this is the most important thing that you do for your agent, is you're teaching it what its job is, how it's going to do that job, how it's going to interact with the user. You're giving all, these, all this information to your agent, and this will make or break your agent. Bad instructions result in an agent that's just absolutely terrible, does not work. That's when you start blaming the technology, right? Oh, this thing just doesn't ever do what I need it to do. It's probably your instructions. And I, and I do this for a living. I consult for a living on this. And I'm telling you, it's usually your instructions. But good instructions and a good knowledge source results in an amazing agent that you will love to use. I've got a I've got instructions already built out here. So let me copy these and paste them in. And then let's just walk through quickly. Now, there's usually a number of different things I will put into agent instructions. Uh, there's, a, there's quite a bit. In fact, I'll, I'll put thousands of characters into the instructions for more complex agents where I need very, very, very fine control over what this agent does. Guardrails. Think of them as guardrails. Uh, so that the agent will stay within its boundaries and do exactly what you're expecting it to do. Right now, I've just defined three areas, role, tone, and responses. So the role, uh, it just simply says your job is to provide instructional steps about a process a user will ask you about. So very, very simple here. You could get much more detailed, and the more detailed you get, the better. Uh, but I want to stick with a simple example so that you have some good foundation knowledge and you can build on top of that. Then the tone, how, how should the agent respond to people? Should it be friendly? Should it be professional? Should it be, should it be sarcastic? Should it talk like a pirate? You know, whatever, however that tone is, you can do that. Uh, you can set that right here. By the way, I have seen agents that talk like a pirate. They're hilarious and they still work. Then there's responses. So we're telling it in all responses, you'll be very brief unless the user asks for more detail. You should list all steps in uh, using numbered bullets. Actually, I should delete. Uh, in. You should list all steps using numbered bullets. I don't want a long, you know, novel to be spit out by Copilot when I'm asking about something uh, because that doesn't really save me a whole lot of time because now I'm going to read through all this mess. I want an agent that just tells me exactly what I need to know for a particular process. That way I could do my job and be done with it. Simple. I don't want to waste time finding a document, opening it, reading through it, figuring out what, which pieces do I actually need, and then performing that the whatever those steps are. Just give me the answer, Copilot, and let me do my thing. That's it. That's the whole point of this. That's why we've got the responses written like this. So we can click Save and Close. And now we can uh, let's uh, let's refresh this page. And we should see our updated. Yeah, now we see our updated 
um, screen here. But before we test this, if you've gotten value out of this video so far, then click that like button. And if you learn something new, then consider subscribing to my channel. It's just a free thing you can do to support me so that I can continue to make free content for you. Now let's test this thing out. I'm going to ask it, what are the steps to replace a server in a server rack? Not even going to put a question mark at the end of it, uh, which kind of bugs me just a little bit, but I think Copilot's still going to be able to help us out. While we're waiting, this button down here is called the Knowledge Agent. If you haven't seen this pop up in SharePoint before, you're, it's, it's going to be coming soon. And I've got a link at the end of this video to tell you all about this Knowledge Agent. You really want to check that out because it's where I believe the future of SharePoint agents are headed. Now let's take a look at the uh, instruct or the the steps it were produced here so it it just gave me the steps that i need that's it no fluff just the steps if you want to see where it came from because you might be saying well that's probably all you have in the document we can check the document now one thing before we do that here's a really really key point about how agents work and how you should be uh interpreting what they give you because there is general knowledge in AI. That's the knowledge that the large language model was trained on. But here, we want it just grounded on our documents. The best way you can tell that an agent's response came from your knowledge and not its general knowledge is by looking at the bottom here, and you'll see all of the content that it used to generate that response. You'll see it all linked right here. So we see server replacement procedure. We know that that's our own content. So this, this is based off of our real knowledge and not the general knowledge. Now let's open up this document and actually see what else was in this document. We've got the purpose, the scope, the required tools, the safety precautions. Then we have actually what we care about, the procedure steps. And then the appendix, the contacts, revision, all the other junk we don't need, right? I just need the steps so that I can do the thing and be done with it. I didn't have to go find the document. I didn't have to look through all this. Uh, all I had to do was ask Copilot, and it was there. It, it just gave me everything. And there's one more thing you want to do with this to make sure everyone in your organization, or at least on this site, can actually access this agent. To do that, as a site owner, you want to click the three dots, and first you want to set it as approved. That will move it into a, out of this library because you'll see it is currently just a file in this library. That means if someone can delete files in here, they can delete your agent. We don't want that. So you'll click the three dots. That is approved. And that will move it out of this library into the site assets library. It's still grounded on your knowledge. It's still grounded on the same thing. We're just kind of moving it a little bit out of, you, out of the, uh, the user's reach. So we've done that. Then the optional step here is if you want this to be the default agent on your site. So when someone clicks the, the agents button, this, this comes up first. If you wanted to do that, you can click a set as site default and then confirm that. At that point, anyone who opens up that agents button will start with your agent and then they can pick another one if they want to. And think of how powerful this would be in your libraries. You could fine tune those instructions so that it performed exactly the way you needed it to. In this case, it's tuned to provide uh, sequential steps. This could be tuned to provide quick summaries of documents. It could be tuned to, to do a number of different things to give you just the pieces of the information that you need uh, at that time. It's really, really powerful and well worth learning. Now, if this is exciting stuff to you and you want to learn more about how to build these things and how to think about the process of building it, the decisions that you, you want to make as you're deciding uh, how to build this, what things to ask yourself to make sure you're doing things correctly and you won't have to go back later on and recreate it some different way. If you want all that kind of guidance, then you definitely want my Copilot Agent Roadmap. It's a free PDF. You'll see it linked in the description below. So go grab that. And if you want to see more about that knowledge agent, because again, this is where I think the future of SharePoint agents are headed. I've got it all covered in this video. So click or tap the screen and I'll see you over there.